Prep Aussie here. Hope you're all well in your part of the world, wherever you are, um, and that your family's all well. It's a cold, brisk morning here in Perth uh, when you're used to 40 degrees. <laughs> um, I have the usual stuff today, but I promised that the next video was going to be a prepping video. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that because something's come up that I needed to share with you all. Um, you'll be able to watch it and uh, share with everyone. And hopefully um, there's some people watching who can forward this to Steve Olson and ask Steve and his team to have a look at it. Um, and because he's he'll have better people, etc., to look at it. Um, Strop and I have been trying to figure this out for a day now. We can't figure it out because I'll show you why in a second, but it's quite interesting. Okay, so let's go through the usuals. Here we are yesterday on the 11th. Um, that, that's zero tilt, which is there. Uh, you can see the green inside there, which is us here. Um, you know, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. This is actually pretty pertinent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the fact of what I'm going to show you in a minute. So just realize that we are now a long way from zero. We are miles out. I'm guessing this is uh, coordinates, longitude, etc. So we are miles out and we're getting worse as he's showing there. Look. Okay. Earthquakes. This is in the world in the last seven days. This does not include America. I don't know why. We don't put American ones on there. There's been a couple in America. Um, even if you're in Australia, let's change it to Australia and region. Sorry, folks, drinking my coffee. Let's let's go for the last. Okay, we'll go for the last thirty day. Well, thirty days. Sorry, for Australia and region. This is going to shock you, by the way. Look at that. <coughs> if that doesn't tell you something in itself, now remember, we used to only get one earthquake every ten years. Look at this. There's been four in, oh sorry, three in Fiji in the last couple of days. Now look at the depth of those. That that can't be right. I'm sorry, but that, that figure there can't be right. And then you go to, to 600 and 600. Something's wrong there. And it's exactly the same area. But some of these earthquakes are bloody massive. Look at Solomon Islands, 6.2. Look at this one here, 6.7. These, these are not something you just go, oh, well, we had a little bit of a quake. Uh, no, we didn't. We had a massive quake. Now, that's Australian region. Australia only. <coughs> Excuse, folks. I've got a frog in my throat this morning. This is in the last 30 days from today. Now remember, we only had one earthquake every 10 years or so. We had a tremor. We are now getting... Now, the, the amazing thing here is, look at the depths. That's the depth there. 10, 0, 0, 0, 12, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 9, 10, 12, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10. There's no great depth there. So what does that tell you? Well, without being a seismologist or a geologist, I would reckon that that tells you that the, the plate that Australia is sitting on is shifting 
which way? It would have to be, it can only be this way, heading towards Africa. Because it can't go that way because there's not enough room because that's the ring of fire plate there. So that's a separate plate. So we can only be shifting this way. So that would tell you that that plate, our, like the top surface of Australia is shifting towards Africa. I may be wrong. If there's anyone out there that can tell me different, please do so. Um, but even then, some of these quakes, bloody, not little quakes, five, six. Where was the one in Norseman? There you go. 6.1. Where's the six one? Five. Where's the one we had in Norseman recently? Oh, they've taken it off. God, we had some bloody earthquakes. Jeez, look at this. I didn't even realise we had some in South, Af South Australia. William Creek, South Australia. <clears throat> Bloody hell. Offshore east of Gosford. And that was level four. At zero. Bloody hell. So, look folks, if you're not worried about this, you really should be. Because either... A, we're shifting towards Africa, the whole country, or B, um, we're going to get a big bang soon, somewhere. Let's hope it's not Sydney or Melbourne or bloody Adelaide or Brisbane, eh? Or even Perth, for that, for that matter. So let's just go back to Australian region. And I want to show you the difference between the Ring of Fire and Australia. It's quite interesting. By the way, if I do that last 30 days, I would be very surprised if they all fit it on one page. Guys, seriously, look at that. Look at this. This is in the last 30 days. Look at the ring of fire, because the ring of fire goes up that way, past China, doesn't it? So it goes... You can, you can even see it there on the ground. Look at the size of some of these earthquakes, folks, in the last, last month. Six point seven. Six point two five. The interesting thing though, <clears throat> look at the ones that say that say zero, right? But then look at the ones on the ring of fire. 174, 599, 613. This is all the depth. 60. 47, 109, 530, 516. That's a 5.7. Band of C, 6.3, 445. Was there any, the Band of C is Indonesia, by the way, off Bali. So was there any tsunami report? Nothing. 6.3? There was a 6.9 here somewhere. They're just phenomenal earthquakes, folks. The ones that are happening in, you know, there's a couple in Australia that are uh, pretty, pretty big, you know, 6, 6.1 or whatever it was. But um, some of the ones that are happening, you know, just off the shore of Australia are bloody huge. Um, you know, the Sandwich Islands recently had a 7.2 in Chile, just off Chile. And there was no, like I said to you last time, there was no tsunami report because it was here, just here. Where's that wave going to go? Could go straight that way, roll over Tasmania or flood Perth or Adelaide, Melbourne. But there was nothing, no report, no nothing. And it was 400 kilometres deep or something, if I remember. Okay, <clears throat> let's go on to U.S. national debt. Okay, folks, there's a show called USA Watchdog. I'll repeat, there is a show on YouTube that you can watch uh, called USA Watchdog by Greg Hunter. There is a, 
his latest interview with his, is with a gentleman called David Morgan, who is very, very good, very good interviewer. Um, he says it as it is. He doesn't muck around. Um, he's very well renowned. The interview that he did recently, uh, I'm going to put a link at the bottom of this uh, video today uh, in the comment section. I'm going to put a link to it. I would strongly urge, especially everyone who's in America, um, but just everyone in general, to watch it. He he doesn't use any big talk this time, and he lays it out exactly, exactly how it is. It's probably the best interview that I've watched in a long time, and they do have some very, very good uh, financial interviews on USA Watchdog. If you're interested in what's happening and what is about to happen, watch this video. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Just watch this video. There's one other thing that you should know. In the video, they mentioned something about the USA debt clock. Um, and I didn't pick it up last time. I went back and had a look at the last time I showed you this, and yeah, it's actually on there. Somewhere along the line, they put this in. Dollar to silver ratio, now, and dollar to gold ratio, now. Now, this only got picked up late because everyone missed it, apparently. Dollar to gold ratio now. That's per ounce, folks. $7,345 per ounce. Now, the interesting thing, if you watch the interview, um, is that they're trying to surmise why the US government has gone and done this. Well, I can go out and buy an ounce of gold at the moment for $1,200. $1,200 Australian an ounce. Um, and I can go and buy uh, an actual bar. Uh, I think I think uh, silver is twenty, or you know, in America it's eighteen dollars an ounce. I think over here it's twenty dollars an ounce. So I can actually go and buy a bar, one kilo bar uh, of um, bullion, bullion silver bar for seven hundred and thirty dollars. I rang up the other day. So my point is. There is a massive manipulation going on. And like I said, Greg Hunter, USA Watchdog, David Morgan. He's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Okay? In America, you're going to suffer massive hyperinflation soon because the US dollars are flooding back into America. So if you're not ready, you better get ready. Go out and buy silver and gold. Not Don't buy... I reckon if you go and buy a bullion, you might as well go out and put a, a bloody um, bullseye on your back. Think about how you can buy gold and silver without going on the radar. I'll leave it at that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, moving on. Um... Got an email from a lady in America, Shentina. Lovely lady. She's been watching my show for a while, um, and she keeps up to date with everything. And thankfully, she's doing her own research as well, which is even better. I love it when people tell me they're doing their, re their own own their own research. That's what this show's all about. It's not about me rabbiting on about everything. It's good that people are getting off their backsides and deciding to go and look for themselves and prep for themselves. I got a fantastic email the other day uh, from a couple in Spain. I'm not going to tell you their name. Um, to you people in Spain and Andalusia, uh, much love and peace, guys. Hope everything's going well. Um, and Shantina said, go on Point Halloran southeast. The reason is, folks, is because uh, every single... Um, except three, I think it was, I checked yesterday. Every single video, oh, sorry, webcam, pointing east, northeast, or any other east you want to say, is virtually shut down on the uh, webcams now. Strangely enough, after we posted that video last week, or the two videos, so they're onto us. They're like rats up a drain pipe, folks. So... We're becoming more and more restricted 
on what we can show. Now, this is a bit that I was I was saying to anyone in America, if you can grab hold of Steve Irwin, um, Olsen, Steve Irwin, he's dead, isn't he? Um, and ask him to have a look at this for us because Strop and I have been through this all day yesterday. We couldn't figure it out. Uh, we hope we're wrong. Uh, but there's a good chance we might be right. We're not astronomers. Strop's pretty good on the analytical, as I said. <clears throat> um, we discussed this for, for three three hours, probably more, yesterday. So what I'm going to do is um, play this video in a second. I've got two here, this one here and this one here. And I'm going to show you the difference. Um, the reason is, is because there's something wrong with where the sun's coming up and we can't figure it out. Um, Steve Dreyer might even be able to have a look at it and tell us as well. Um, basically, it stems around this star and where you're going to see the sun. Now, we're in winter here in the Southern Hemisphere. So the sun should be coming up um, northeast, obviously. Um, but just watch this video, and then I'm going to break it down, and I'm going to show you the other video. But like I said, it all hem hems around this star at the moment. I won't go into that too much just yet. I'll just show you. <clears throat> Just watch over here. Watch this is where the sun's coming up. This camera's pointing southeast. Okay, folks, I'll stop it there. Okay, now, we can't find out how they've placed this camera. What we do know is, is that we always used to film on the eastern camera, uh, and the eastern camera is pointing, obviously, the other way. Um, sorry, sort of out directly that way, over the, uh, the bay which is on the same pole as this one we figured out yesterday after much discussion. <clears throat> the reason we're saying all this is because, um, because of this star. Now, when I move this forward, notice how this, this star is a very singular star. It's on its own. Okay. It stays on its own. Right through. There's no other stars. It's a very bright star. Those are not UFOs, by the way, folks. That's just airplanes we figured out, by the way. They're on the um, shutter exposure. Okay, so everyone stopped freaking out. I did it as well. I thought they were UFOs. They're not. They're planes. So, so it doesn't really, it doesn't get with any other stars. Now, as I said, I'm going to show you in a second what why that's important. There's only one there. That's sort of a, a brightish star. Now just watch the sunrise. Don't worry about the camera going dark and everything else. It's just the aperture, uh, the camera changing at six in the morning to allow for the sunset or sun up. Sorry. Now what caught our attention was that you can see the sun. Now the sun could be setting way over here for all we know. Okay. Let me bring this up a bit more.
Hang on, folks. Okay, folks, here we are again. That break turned into an hour. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you look over here, you can see the um, the sun. Now, as I said, uh, Strop and I in somewhat confusion because this camera is pointing southeast. So technically, you know, you would say that, okay, if you're going to point a camera south and east, then halfway would be south and halfway would be east. That's not how it happens, though. So... <clears throat> Where they've pointed this camera is an anomaly to us. We don't really know for sure. Um, so, like I said, just let me go forward and just watch the sun. Just let me reduce that a bit. You can't really see it, can you? Right, that should be better. Okay, it's 6.29. Just keep watching that lower left-hand corner. Okay, so... You get the picture. The sun does come up, but it's very, very... There's not a lot there in it. <clears throat> Excuse me for my throat today. Um, I'll stop it when the sun comes up this time. Keep an eye on that star. Like I said, that's actually ultra important. Just trying to get this breakdown right so you guys understand what I'm saying here, or what I think I'm saying. Okay, so that's when the the aperture of this, the camera lens changed. So if you can see the sun, okay, it's it's kind of like that, isn't it? You can see a fair bit of it there. Strop and I are still not sure if that is something else or it's the sun. Okay, so just keep watching. See, that's the aperture of the lens, just opening up again there. Now you can clearly see it there at six o'clock. It's set for six, so that when the sun does come up, it, you know, uh, doesn't blind it, get a big white out. Okay, look, that gives you a better better image of it there, doesn't look. You can clearly see the sun, or the outlines of the sun, if it is the sun. <laughs> Who bloody knows these days? Okay, so there, it is. that's that's got to be the tail end of it. So if you come out here, so the sun should be about here somewhere, just off to the right, to the left, sorry. <clears throat> now, as I said before, the whole reason we were doing this was because of the star, which is vitally important. There you go. So the sun's not far away because the reflection is just straight down here. So say the sun's just here. Okay. So I want to go back to this star so you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Okay. Now... The star is actually pretty crucial in this whole thing, trying to figure out where this camera's pointing. As I said, Strop and I talked about it for a good few hours yesterday and a lot of other things yesterday. So Strop got on Stellarium and he sent me this, this shot from Stellarium. Let me bring this up for you. Okay. Now... You can obviously see east. You can see where the sun was, according to Stellarium, supposed to be yesterday. Here. Okay. Now remember that camera was pointing southeast. So, okay. So say we're here. Now the difficulty that Strop and I have is that if that camera is pointing southeast, and remember you could just see the outline of the sun. Okay. You could just see what we thought was the corner of the sun. So say the camera was here, or, you know, even over here, and you could just see that corner of the sun in the screen. And that would mean that we can't see, we didn't see any of these, this star system. The only star we saw was a single star. So you got Riggle and Canopus. Now, the difficulty here is, is if that star is Canopus, then that means that the sun was here. 
and this camera is actually pointing 100% because if you look at the camera shot, look, see what that is? It's almost dead smack bang in the middle of the camera there. <clears throat> so that would mean that that is Canopus. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? So that would mean the sun has moved this way. Or, sorry, yeah, the sun would be in this position somewhere, more over here. So it's moved a good 30 degrees out. So, okay, 5, 10, 15. It's about 20 out. If you divide the quarters, up, you know, that's an old bushy trick. Don't worry about that. Okay, so that would mean that this is Canopus. But is it? We can't figure it out because we can't find any other stars. We should be able to see those there, but they're not in alignment either. They're not there. It can't be that one because that would mean that the sun was all the way over here. Does everyone understand? So it can only be this one. By the way, if it's this one, we are in a world of problems. Because this, that star is so bright, let me play it for you. And it's a singular star. And it's a singular star, as you can see, then that would tell you that it's this one. Does that make sense? Because there's no other stars around it either. Wriggle, you should be able to see these, these three here, these three here, that three. You should even be able to see uh, Bellatrix. So in our estimation, the sun is not there. It's actually over here somewhere. So that means that the Earth is tilted a hell of a lot. A hell of a lot. It means the North Pole's been pulled right down. Like I said, I'm not an astronomer. This is just going off gut instinct and looking at what's on the screen. We can't see anything that matches that, but we can't 100% confirm that. So if there's anybody watching who knows how to do that, based on what you can see on this screen, that one there, please, please tell us, because it's really important. Really important. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you Canberra. Um, on this one. Now, the sunrise in Canberra today is at 7.09. <clears throat> now, the days get longer as we come up to the, the next solstice, which is on the 21st of June. Uh, shorter, sorry. Winter, isn't it? Days get shorter as we come towards that. Um, so what I thought I would do was go on Canberra on the same day, same time. Now, this camera, they, they say, is pointing east, right? This is Latham, Latham East, Canberra. Because, God, folks, I had a hell of a job trying to find any cameras, by the way, that would uh, show me east. So this is the only one I've got pretty well. Um, and it's cloudy. Um, the Friday one is here, which I'm going to go through with you guys in a minute. Okay. So let's just say this is set up and that's half. It's pointing directly east. Okay. Well, that would mean that the sun should come up over here somewhere. Should be to the south over there to the left. So let's say east should be here. Okay, I've set it for the same time and everything else, 5 till 8 in the morning. Now I'm going to show you something that, funny enough, Steve Dry has been trying to tell everyone for months, and I don't, you know, we've all been listening, but we haven't really got his, the bigger picture. So I'm going to play this now, and then I'm going to stop it, and then we're going to have a look at something. Remember, sun comes up at 7.09, or say 
Okay, I'm going to stop it there because remember what I said to you, if this camera is pointing east, the sun should be coming up southeast at the moment. Should be coming up southeast. So what I'm going to do is go backwards and I'm going to show you something because you miss it when you're not looking at this. This is probably one of the most interesting things I've found in a long time. Okay, 619. So I'm going to go forward frame by frame. It's going to take a while, but you'll get, it's better off doing it this way, believe me. See the color of the clouds? Now, 630, you would expect some horizon to be coming up. Look at that. Keep an eye on it. You can't see any other signs of the horizon over here. Okay, because the sun is supposed to be coming up southeast. Now notice how the, the camera is pointing up towards, you know, big trees as well. So camera's pointing up so the horizon shot will be later anyway but the sun's reflection should come up this way just keep an eye on it look at this over here you can actually see the blue just here look Does that look like an horizon to anyone? You can actually see the outline of it. So the center is here somewhere. This is on the same day, folks. Now you can really see it. You see that? Look, have a look towards the tree there. You can see where it goes down there, look. You see that? It doesn't go that way. So you know it goes from there and all the way past this tree here. You can actually see the center. Look, faded, faded. So that's the center there. See? Look. You can see it in the trees there. Look. So it fades, goes strong, fades over this side. Look at the colour of the sky just here. And look at the colour of the sky here. Keep watching, it gets more interesting. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Note these clouds here and this cloud here. See the colour on the top of these clouds? Right, watch that. Watch it. Just keep watching and keep watching the, the sun. How can that be lit from there, from the back side of that cloud? Gets more interesting. Watch. Wouldn't be that being lit on the back underside of that? That cloud tell you that it's being lit from above. None of these have got light on them. Look at that. Look, it's all on the top. Okay, we'll give we'll give you a little bit of latitude here because I already thought of it myself for the horizon coming up and beaming the sun up. Okay, so it's coming off the face of the clouds. Just keep watching.
Has anyone noticed anything? Where's the sun? It's gone. You can all look for, back through this later. See, look, there's the sun. Or is it? But that's a, that's a, a light source there, isn't it? Keep going, keep going. See, look, still haven't seen the sun, have we? Now, you know, I did say that this these this camera is pointing towards pointing towards an up up up, so it's not pointing down directly at the ground or anything like. It's actually pointing up a bit. Now we're at 728. Still haven't seen the sun. Not even a ray of sunlight. And by, the, by ray, I mean like the sun poking through the clouds or anything like that. And this cloud cover here hasn't been that dense that we shouldn't have got a cloud, a sun at the moment. So let's just keep going. Remember, this camera is pointing east, supposedly. And there's the sun. 7.42. If this camera is pointing directly east, then yes, that is that is southeast in some regards, but not the full southeast like it's supposed to be over here somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to keep going and let it go on its own now. And you watch. never really came up so let's get back to where that Sun came up and you'll have you'll understand And that's where you first see it, folks, right there. So what is that? There's no other light sources anywhere near that for at least the next hour. See that? If that was the sun why aren't these clouds here illuminated Pretty damning evidence, eh, folks? So, one last thing. This is Friday night in Canberra, and I've stopped it. So it's the 10th, 10th of the 6th. So this is Friday night in Canberra, and I've stopped it at 6.16 in the morning. Sorry, I'll go back a bit. Okay, now, that's a star, obviously. Now, keep your eye on over here. 
This is the only night I could find that was clear. Can you see in the trees just there? Look, just here. Just there you'll see that star. But also note where that is in retrospect. See that? That's what we were missing on the day. The yes, on the day after we were looking at it. So that tells you that the sun is here. But on the day we filmed, it was over here. There was no broad horizon shot like that, and you can even see that. But just pay attention to this star. It's the only one that I've got to go on. On. Sorry, I'll go back a bit. See it just there? It's tiny. It's really tiny. You see it? It's just a speck. It's just just a tiny speck. That's the only star that I've got to go on, folks. So something massive happened on Friday to Saturday. This is Saturday. Go back. We shifted literally 20 degrees, 25 degrees in one day. They're not even the same, folks. Not even the same. In the same position. That's Friday. You can see it coming out over here. Going down there. This is Saturday. More or less the same time. Ten minutes later. You can actually see it. You can even see where it goes in there behind a tree and goes down into that. There's no, it doesn't go right over here or anything. You can actually see the outline of it. So if you follow that across, there it is there. It goes up. That's a 20 degree tilt, approximately, I'm guessing, in one day. Once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to um, Shantina. If it hadn't been for you, mate, we wouldn't have actually investigated this and I wouldn't have found this. So, uh, in actual fact, You've actually helped us all by finding what you found. Um, one last thing, the Lord's Prayer. Um, I get a lot of emails and comments from people about me saying the Lord's Prayer. Um, I'm not religious, folks. I never have been. But I do like this prayer. And I think spiritually um, everybody, it pays for everyone to have something spiritual um, this this I like this saying here the Lord's Prayer contains a sum total of religion and morals you know look um, I'm gonna say this at the end of each thing so if you don't want to listen to it quite happy for you to switch off but quite happy for you to read it as well so I'm not saying it because it's Christian or you know I know it's I just know it as the Lord's Prayer and it's always resonated with me so let's go together, eh? The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Guys, I've gone on too long today. I hope you're all well. You have a good week. Um, God bless you all. Peace out. Good morning, everyone. Prep Aussie here. I hope you're all well in your part of the world, wherever you are, um, and that your family's all well. It's a cold, brisk morning here in Perth uh, when you're used to 40 degrees. <laughs> um, 
I have the usual stuff today, but I promised that the next video was going to be a prepping video. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that because something's come up that I needed to share with you all. Um, you'll be able to watch it and uh, share with everyone. And hopefully um, there's some people watching who can forward this to Steve Olson and ask Steve and his team to have a look at it. Um, and because he's he'll have better people etc to look at it um strop and i've been trying to figure this out for a day now we can't figure it out because i'll show you why in a second but it's quite interesting okay so let's go through the usuals here we are yesterday on the 11th um that, that's zero tilt which is there uh, you can see the green inside there, which is us here. Um, you know, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. This is actually pretty pertinent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the fact of what I'm going to show you in a minute. So just realize that we are now a long way from zero. We are miles out. I'm guessing this is uh, coordinates longitude etc so we are miles out and we're getting worse as he's showing there look okay earthquakes this is in the world in the last seven days this does not include america i don't know why we don't put american ones on there there's been a couple in america um, even if you're in australia let's change it to australia and region Sorry, folks, drinking my coffee. Let's let's go for the last. Okay, we'll go for the last thirty day or thirty days. Sorry, for Australia and region. This is going to shock you, by the way. Look at that. <coughs> that doesn't tell you something in itself. Now remember, we used to only get one earthquake every ten years. Look at this. There's been four in, oh sorry, three in Fiji in the last couple of days. Now look at the depth of those. That that can't be right. I'm sorry, but that, that figure there can't be right. And then you go to, to 600 and 600. Something's wrong there. And it's exactly the same area. But some of these earthquakes are bloody massive. Look at Solomon Islands, 6.2. Look at this one here, 6.7. These, these are not something you just go, oh, well, we had a little bit of a quake. Uh, no, we didn't. We had a massive quake. Now, that's Australian region. Australia only. <coughs> Excuse, folks. I've got a frog in my throat this morning. This is in the last 30 days from today. Now remember, we only had one earthquake every 10 years or so, or we had a tremor. We are now getting... Now, the, the amazing thing here is, look at the depths. That's the depth there. 10, 0, 0, 0, 12, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 9, 10, 12, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10. There's no great depth there. So what does that tell you? Well, without being a seismologist or a geologist, I would reckon that that tells you that the, the plate that Australia is sitting on is shifting which way it would have to be it can only be this way heading towards africa because it can't go that way because there's not enough room because that's the ring of fire plate there so that's a separate plate so we can only be shifting this way 
So that would tell you that that plate out, like the top surface of Australia is shifting towards Africa. I may be wrong. If there's anyone out there that can tell me different, please do so. Um, but even then, some of these quakes, bloody, not little quakes, five, six. Where was the one in Norseman? There you go. 6.1. Where's the six one? Five. Where's the one we had in Norseman recently? Oh, they're taking it off. God, we had some bloody earthquakes. Jeez, look at this. I didn't even realise we had some in South, Af South Australia. William Creek, South Australia. <clears throat> Bloody hell. Offshore east of Gosford. And that was level four. At zero. Bloody hell. So, look folks, if you're not worried about this, you really should be. Because either 